my gosh, what is this? I speculate this is a history cab. Oh my gosh! Yes, you're correct. This is a history cab. And I'm your host, Bob. Hi, Bob. Let's begin, shall we? Yes. Let's All right. go. Shall. Well, here are the rules. I'm going to drive you to your destination, and along the way, I'm going to ask you general knowledge, history, and English questions. For each question you get right, you get a certain amount of money. And at the end, you will receive it, depending on your score. We're winning the thing! If you... Okay, listen, Greg. If you get three questions wrong, you get kicked out, and I'll put you right back on the street. Everyone understand again? Yes. Okay, let's begin then. The main topic of today's show is the following quote by James Bryce. Our country is not the only thing to which we owe our allegiance. It is also owed to justice and to humanity. Patriotism consists not in waving the flag, but in striving that our country shall be righteous as well as strong. I've generated a thesis for this quote in order for my friends to hear and understand a little better. The U.S. government is based on freedom and equality for all. So we all have this obligation to be the world police and ensure the righteousness and peace not only for in foreign countries, but also on our American soil. Um, sure, that works. <laughs> Let's begin! All right. Yo, guys, I love nerds for friends. American troops were fighting overseas during World War II. Keeping this, keeping this in mind, you need to give two or more historical facts and two or more literature facts that relate to U.S. involvement in World War II. They can be random facts, but the catch is, you must provide evidence for each fact, or for each event, and explain why it pertains to the quote. You have two minutes. Go! I have no clue. Uh, Dude, I don't know this one. Uh, Alright, I'm good at this. I remember this subject from a class I had a while ago when we were bombed at Pearl Harbor. The Japanese put our, put our safety in jeopardy and we had to come together as a nation to make sure our country would not perish. Yeah, that's a good one for sure. Hey, in, this, in the quote, it says that being patriotic means protecting our land and our entrance into World War II and ensure that our country would be protected from a foreign threat, threat right? Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I remember my grandpa talking about World War II. Did he? Yeah. We should probably think about that a little bit. Look at the devastation the Nazis have made happen. Let's go talk to some of the prisoners and see what has gone on. Hello, prisoners. We are here to help you. Thank you, thank you. I find the Nazi regime is declining and we will be free again. Can you tell us a little about what has happened here? Another, Do you know that we were coming? Another one of the prisoners got his hands on the radio and overheard a conversation about your President Roosevelt creating the War Refuge Board. What is the War Refugee Board? It is a federal agency created in 1944 to try to help people threatened with murder by the Nazis. You guys would still be imprisoned by Nazis if our government did not think of this plan to help a foreign country when it is in need. This makes a lot more sense. I'm so glad America is there to be an international police. Man, I hope these Nazi devils get punished for their wrongdoing. Okay, guys, let's get out of this hellish place and God bless America! That must have been a tough experience for prisoners. Yeah, but like, at least they got what they deserved. Like, there was like, at, at the Nuremberg trials, 24 of the, the Nazi criminal, like the top people, I guess. The top officials? The top officials, yeah. They got like, sentenced for like, crime against humanity, and 12 of them even got the death sentence. But, I mean, that still doesn't like, make up for what they did. Pretty wow. Crazy. Yes, that is all correct. I'm impressed. I give me more... Excuse me. By giving me more than two historical facts, you guys now have earned yourself a higher bonus that will count when the game is almost over. Now on to the random English facts. You know what, Greg? Your grandpa reminds me of uh, a book that we read in English with uh, two soldiers. Um, what was it called again? I think it was a short story, dude. Two what? soldiers. Two soldiers? Yeah. William Faulkner? Yeah, Faulkner. Yeah, Faulkner. Yeah, that's Faulkner. It. That's One of the few stories yeah. I read. Yeah. It was, a, it was about an eight-year-old boy whose brother went off to war. And then um, the boy wanted to, he wanted to fight and serve his country, right? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And he traveled all the way to go see the military and ready himself for the war. And but when he got there, he realized that he was too young for the war. Yeah, I remember like he wanted to say like he wanted to fight, but, like when he gets older, but like, he was too young, so he couldn't yet. Yeah. And it pretty much shows like the young boy shows that it's the America or our government trying to spur nationalism and pride in America in order to promote allegiance to yeah, yeah to our nation so yeah. that's good so what is it Bob? good job guys keep it coming with these facts you need one more random English fact and you will have completed level one yes, yes. Oh, let's keep it going, yes 
guys. Hi. You got this one? Oh yeah, I got it, I got it. And the uh, Emperor was defined by Julie Otsuka. The U.S. is in the midst of World War II, right? Yeah, and that, that literature book totally relates to our quote, which just shows how the U.S. government tries to protect us by isolating all of the foreign threats and putting them in internment camps. Yeah. Right? right. All right, Bob. Perfect. Woo! Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Perfect score for round one. Two more perfect rounds, and you will get the grand prize we got at this. the end. But first, to a quick commercial break. Five. Five dollar. Five dollar foot long. Five dollar, five dollar foot long. long. At Subway, eat fresh. Okay, and we're back. Our contestants have already gone through one perfect round, and round two is about to begin. Are you guys ready? Yeah, we're ready. Yeah, let's go. Okay. This round will be different. I'm going to ask you ask you questions and you will give me answers. Simple as that. Name two historical facts relating to the civil rights movement of the 60s with specific examples. Well, could one of the examples be by the Montgomery bus boycott? Yeah, like definitely. When the African Americans mm -hmm. decided to boycott the Montgomery bus system until they got the equal rights that they deserve. Yeah, that was really important because for so long, African American people had not been, had been oppressed and taken advantage of, but Dr. King and Rosa Parks are showing that they're going to stick up for what they believe in and do whatever they can to get equal rights. Yeah. Alright guys, just one more example. Good job. Hey, like, what about like those sit-ins, like, like during the 60s that some of the students like wanted to do, you know? Like, yeah, what, yeah, the, I remember it, with the schools and everything. Yeah, the schools in order to, like, because they want to get the rights that they deserve. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but what exactly happened again? We deserve to be fed like everybody else in the city. No, go away. You are making my business lose money, and I don't want to fight to break out of here. We're not going anywhere, sir. We just want to be served like everyone else. Please, sir, we're just asking to be treated equally. What's wrong about that? Because, didn't you see the sign that says whites only? And no one's your kind here, so either be or I'll have to call the cops. You can try to get rid of us, sir, but we're not going anywhere. If you don't listen to us and you get rid of us, only more people from our organization will come and do the same thing. It doesn't matter, get out of here, you're not welcome. It doesn't matter who comes, we'll never stop doing what we believe in. Yes, we will overcome this injustice. Wow, that was a crazy time period. That's messed up. Why yeah. is that store owner so mean? I can't imagine if they went through it. Like, that guy was crazy. Yeah. Yes, that time period was a very low point for the United States. But you guys explained it perfectly. Okay. Now two more questions concerning literature correct, and you guys are on to the final round. Yes! Let's go guys! We got this! Almost got this. Okay. <laughs> Here's the question. During this period of time from 1950 to 1972, many important events were going on. Name two major events that occurred during this time period. However, there is a catch. You must use your examples from literature including documents, speeches, or novels. One example has to be about the civil rights movement for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Martin Luther King Jr. and the I Have a Dream speech. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. King brought about justice in America by nonviolent protest methods and helped gain equal rights for all African Americans with famous speeches such as the I Have a Dream speech. Martin Luther King Jr.'s actions helped deal with the problem of the U.S. not being a completely free and righteous nation, just as the Constitution declares it to be. He helped bring everyone together to enjoy domestic peace. Yes. Yes, Gregory. That is right. Now one more literature answer. I remember another article we read in English called The History of Earth Day. Yeah, I remember that also, but like, what does that to do with like Bob giving us like the question, you know? What does that to do with our quote? I don't know. Let's figure it out. 